In the 1980s, Americans were afraid of Japan's economic might. Japan is one of the wealthiest machines ever created. They're laughing to themselves as to what's happening over here. We're not kidding ourselves. America is being ripped off and I'll tell you what, we're not going to have an America in 10 years if it keeps going like this. However, Akio Morita, the visionary co-founder of Sony, emerged as a fierce critic of US capitalism and business practices, going as far to claim that there are no human rights for American workers. If American telling us human rights should be respected, but then these employees are fired, losing business, still management stay to keep his his profit. I am wondering whether human rights of these employees. The Japanese corporations have since declined. Let's look at some of Marita's thoughts on US capitalism, hypocrisy, and racism, and explore how much is relevant today. I think America is getting an inferiority complex about Japan. Our cars are every bit as good as the Japanese. Morita was not your typical Japanese businessman, even by today's standards. An English speaker and a true global citizen, his ideas and inventions made Sony a global brand. Sony was the first Japanese company to list on the New York Stock Exchange, and Morita's philosophy and management style were a major inspiration for a generation of young American tech leaders, including Steve Jobs and Jeff Bezos. Morita-san, the guy who founded Sony, set as the mission for Sony that they were going to make Japan known for quality. He didn't say we're going to make Sony known for quality. He said we're going to make Japan known for quality. He, he chose a mission for Sony that was bigger than Sony. We have a similar idea in mind. One of the great inspirations to me and a lot of the folks at Apple was Akio Morita at Sony. The innovation that they brought to the marketplace was staggering and we've certainly been very inspired by it and I hope that some of the things that we're going to be doing today would make him smile. Ironically, both Jobs and Bezos have been accused of treating employees badly. A stark contrast to Morita's philosophies, which we'll go into now. How worried are you about Japan bashing in this country? I'm very much worried about that. Frustrated by US criticism and Japan bashing during the 70s and 80s, Marita co-authored the book titled The Japan That Can Say No. His primary criticism focused on US companies' excessive prioritization of short-term profits, where employees are treated a little more than cogs in a machine to be discarded as soon as the economy gets tough, adding that he found it hypocritical that the US government ignores the protection of its own people while criticizing other nations for human right failings. You said the United States claims to be very concerned about human rights. You wrote of it as though that is a human rights violation. That in this country, if economy is good, company hires many, many people to the factory and make a more profit, product and begin to make a more profit. And then recession comes, management hire the people, lay over the people to cut down the expense and to keep management profit. So that means recession was not caused by these employees. Recession come from some somewhere else. But then these employees are fired, losing business, and you know, still management stay to keep his his profit. I am wondering whether human right of these employees how many when you got? If American telling us human rights should be respected. In his book, he strongly criticizes American CEOs' lavish lifestyles, complete with yachts, planes, and villas, which are not just funded by their million dollar salaries, but also outrageous bonuses and golden parachutes, even if the company isn't doing well. He then outlines the poverty in the US, especially amongst minorities as a comparison, saying that the gap between rich and poor is too large. Additionally, these very same CEOs are the ones responsible for the hollowing out of American manufacturing, where everything has been outsourced for short-term profits. In this country, many times corporation or company is for elite top management. In Japan, corporation or company is not top management. Corporation is for group. That means all the company employees, including top manager. Though not as common today in corporate Japan, he compares how Japanese companies treat employees as lifelong family, family. with management, workers, and the company binded together by a common destiny. The motivation for Japanese CEOs is not only just profit for stockholders, but to create a community of employees who have a great sense of meaning and accomplishment in the work they do. One time seeing American company layoffing people, firing people, I thought Japanese company is not business organization. 
Japanese company looks like a social welfare organization. But Japanese management created new concept. All the member of the company, we call the family member, feel this is an organization in which everybody share same fate. American custom, all management are always worrying about bottom line of their quarterly report. And if that the quarterly report, bottom line is bad, yeah, shareholders sell the stock, stock price go down, and then this management will be criticized and he might lose the, the job. So the problem in your mind is that the American investor has a short run point of view. Yeah. Morita mentions that he never fires employees and that he's seen more returns by investing in underperforming ones by giving them additional training, education, or job experience. For this reason, does the Japanese worker develop a strong sense of dedication to the company? He further adds that this sense of loyalty does not exist in the US, saying that workers have been conditioned to act like mercenaries for hire, prioritizing goals such as leisure and early retirement over long-term commitment and fulfillment. This contrasts to his Japanese employees, who were once offered lucrative US wages and terms, but they refused in order to have longer term security and community in their careers. We feel company is just like a family, just like home. We are working together. So this group of people working the same direction should not be treated just like a community. We treat any personnel in the company as a human. And lastly, Morita didn't shy away from accusing the American government of hypocrisy and racism. Back in the 80s and 90s, a firestorm of American criticism erupted when Japanese corporations were snapping up American businesses and real estate. The Japanese also bought $14.7 billion worth of American properties in 1989. They own an estimated 30% of downtown Los Angeles. We're letting some country who we beat in the war they don't, have, they don't have to bomb us anymore because they own everything. The reason that we fear Japan is that we Americans see Japan as this enorm, enormous juggernaut bent on world domination and it is simply, it's going to swallow us along with, with everyone else. However, Morita pointed out that many European nations have much larger stakes in American corporations. So why single the Japanese out? Perhaps Japan is gaining too much control over too many American industries. How do you respond to that? I think in this country, not only Japan, many European countries own the company and control the company. I don't think Jap Japanese industry or Japanese being the biggest one to to have a such a such an asset in this country. You think there's a certain element of racism in it? Mm, maybe you know that's why I'm say still toward to the American general public. Japanese looks like an alien, which found must be changed. While Japan's economic boom has long faded since Morita passed away in 1999, his long-standing dedication to workers has contributed to his remarkably low unemployment rate, which historically sits between 2 to 4 percent. With quiet quitting and job hopping at a record high in America, are Morita's comments still relevant today? Let us know in the comments.